We're just finishing up our second year using iPads in the classroom. In the first year, we had them in most classrooms, but this year, every classroom teacher and therapist or support person has one. Our speech therapists are using the iPads in many ways. They're using it to help children access the general preschool curriculum, as well as helping them on their individual goals. This includes literacy learning, social interactions, and articulation. Many of the speech therapist activities with the iPads are focused on supporting literacy skills. Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric. I like using the iPad to incorporate books. There's a couple of different ways that you can do that. One way is to use YouTube versions of books. They are very interactive and engaging. It's the same story that they've read in the classroom. You're able to pause it and ask more questions, ask about the vocabulary in the story. You keep their interest. The animation of the YouTube books is very engaging for the children. YouTube movies don't replace books, they're just another way to enjoy the story. Families don't have the books at home, but a lot of times they have access to YouTube, so that actually gives them an opportunity to be able to share those books with the children at home. The speech therapist team with the classroom teachers to focus on books and vocabulary that's being used in the classroom. The title is Growing Vegetable Soup, and the author is Lois Ellert. Sometimes we use the iPad in conjunction with the book that children are working on that week. Do you guys want to talk about some of your words yes. first that you learned this week? Yes. A apple! One of the reasons that we use the iPad is to increase their interest and motivation to learn new vocabulary and also to have them realize that different pictures can mean all the same word. There was broccoli. There was broccoli in here? Really? Yeah. They had learned the vocabularies with specific pictures that week, and when I introduced new pictures, they were still able to generalize the words and name a tomato that might look different than the one they saw. They were able to name and generalize that vocabulary. I like working in a small group in the classroom because it gives a chance for children with all different needs to interact. If there's a student who doesn't have many words, they can be the one to slide to the next picture or point to it. You have students who can offer more developed language to other students who are just learning those skills. So it meets a lot of different types of needs. The they were working on taking turns, attending to an activity, increasing their vocabulary. They could touch the pictures and make them bigger and smaller and slide to the next picture. Anytime an iPad is being used, we have multiple outcomes. So whatever activity is being done on the iPad, we can embed social competency skills. That's a nice job taking a turn, Olga. So when children are using the iPads, they're getting an opportunity to practice social skills such as sharing, taking turns, problem solving. One of the little girls in the classroom is really working on waiting her turn, using her words to take a turn, and taking turns. In the beginning of the activity, she wasn't using the words herself. Touch the banana in front of the monkey. If I had to give her the words and say, say my turn, and she did it once with me there, and then after I left, she did it by herself. She wasn't able to wait her turn yet, which was fine. She would come to the group, say my turn, take a turn, and then go back to housekeeping and play, and then she would come back again. So she didn't like the waiting part, but that was fine. She found another activity to do, and then she would come back to the group and join in again. Like all of our activities in preschool, the iPads can be used for differentiated instruction. Every child can use it at their own level. There is a great app to use with the kids that has multiple components. The first part is matching. Good job. The other part of the app for kids that really, really need to work on just basic skills, basic participation, basic turn taking, is you have animals that you're supposed to manipulate. So you either crack an egg or you shear the sheep. Hey, listening. Yeah. Jeremiah's turn. And that is just great, just basic interaction for them. There was one little boy who was playing with the iPad and 
he was so motivated and so excited when he accomplished something. Yes, I found the game. I found the game. I found the game. Good job, Jacob. He would get really excited and he was so proud of himself. And that's one of the things I like about the iPad is it is so motivating for students to want to learn more and be curious and work towards goals and they feel proud and accomplished when they complete them. We hope that all preschool activities are engaging, but the iPad just raises the bar on interest and engagement, and so children are motivated to practice a range of social skills. One of the challenges for speech therapists is to make articulation practice relevant. In addition to helping children improve their ability to articulate words, they're working on social skills, they're interacting with each other, helping each other. You knew it. Good job. What I love about the iPad is the fact that it has a camera on it. That is great visual and auditory feedback for the kids. I especially like using it as a supplement to the target of words that we have laid out in picture form during articulation groups and provide the kids with an opportunity to record themselves for however many words they're working on. And as they move along and each have a turn, they're able to realize that, hey, another child is working on the same thing I am. Hey, I got the sound. I didn't get the sound. And they get really enthused by watching themselves. To make articulation activities relevant to the children, the speech therapist will pick from the books and activities and vocabulary that's being used in the classroom. Our therapists find it can be really difficult to record video in the classroom because of the noise. It's important that we get a clear recording for the children so that they can go back and listen and get that feedback. So we record video in a quieter, controlled environment. There were four kids that I was working with and each has a different energy level and a different motivation, but all of the kids enjoyed seeing themselves, particularly two of the kids. Hadrian initially was not so engaged in the session, but once we pulled out the iPad and used the camera, was more intrigued about what was going on. Hello, Pillar. <gasps> I heard it. Thank you, friend. Caterpillar. Caterpillar, real big, real loud. Caterpillar. Caterpillar, caterpillar. Right. Although he was a little more apprehensive about doing it, he still enjoyed receiving the feedback that he got the sound, he was trying. Try for me. Green kite. Green kite. Oh, I like that. And it helped him become more engaged in the session. Philip was very, very verbal and encouraging for himself and for the other kids. I was giving Philip the tactile cue that the sound is made towards the back of your throat, kind of like that. And if he made the sound incorrectly, I would cue him visually myself. Oh, let's try it way, way in the back of our mouth, though. Cow girl. Good trying. Cow girl. You got it. And then when he watched the video, he was able to see that he was cueing himself while he was saying the sound correctly. And so while an activity may be done outside the classroom so the child can hear, we know there is carryover in the classroom. Our school social worker told me a story of how this has really been used in carryover in the classroom. She came in one day and was working with Philip, and he said, hey, hey, I've been working on this sound. Do you want to see it? And she said, sure, Philip. And so he cued himself to make the sound and produced it correctly to her. So that visual feedback was really, really helping him and increase his awareness of what he was working on. Our children are digital learners, and so we are just beginning to teach them and the families ways that they can use digital devices to support their learning. There's always apps that are coming out, and there are always new resources, speech therapy blogs, to find ways to use apps in our work. You can use it in so many different ways. It's versatile. You can use it to focus on communication skills, literacy skills, math skills, writing skills. It's also really good for students who are learning English. You just kind of have to be creative. How am I going to implement this with what my kids need, what their goals are? 
what do I think their interests are going to be in deciphering what apps to get and how to use it in the classroom. So many kids that you're not directly working with that you want to help because they have some skills that they need to develop too. So it helps me multitask as a therapist to move from one thing to the next quickly and be efficient in how I'm providing the services. We view using iPads in the classroom as a process and we're learning more and more every day.